Hello everyone, I'm here with my Mario Christmas sweater on because we're going to talk Nintendo Switch gift buying. Maybe you just purchased a Nintendo Switch, maybe you're getting one for Christmas, maybe you're buying a Switch for someone else, or you want to buy a gift for someone else you know is going to get a Switch or has a Switch already, or you just want to buy yourself something. Whatever it is, these are the essentials every Switch owner needs, and also some little added stuff in there that could just make the experience a little better. To start off the Nintendo Switch gift guide, I need to start by telling you how you can keep your Nintendo Switch protected. You need either a screen protector or a switch dock sock. I don't actually know what they're always called. They have a bunch of different names. I like to call them dock socks because I think it's funny. But you need either one of these things. Why? For two reasons. First, the Switch's dock is kind of cheapy plastic, and some of them aren't molded correctly, so a lot of people, including myself, have experienced when you slide the Switch into the dock, it scratches the screen or the back of the console. The back of the console can't super be fixed, but if you get a screen protector or a dock sock, you can kind of push your Switch against the front and not worry about scratching it, and thus not scratch the back. But the screen can be scratched if you don't have one of these two things. I'd always recommend a screen protector because anytime there's anything that's a touch screen, I always put a screen protector on it, because if I don't, it inevitably gets scratched anyway, and then I'm sad because for the rest of my time owning this thing, it has a scratch on So I'd recommend getting a screen protector right away, and then you don't have to get the dock sock, but I like these dock covers because they look really cool and they're, they're obviously super soft, but it can kind of give an added design to your Switch if that is what you want out of it. For me, I do like the regular Switch, how it looks, just having the Nintendo Switch icon on the front, it goes well with my black aesthetic on my desk, so I don't really care too much, but some people really like these, and then you'd never have to worry about scratching your screen but you need one of these things. And just so you know, everything I'm gonna talk about in this video is linked down below, so you can check out my picks of the best of these things because there are a thousand screen protectors, some are better than others. I'll show you the one I got and what I like, and all the other things I talk about, they'll all be down there for you to explore further after the video. With the dock covers, they have a ton of different designs and you can really customize whatever you want. And for me, I chose the Hori branded screen cover because that's the one that I prefer. I like that it's officially licensed by Nintendo, and for me, I'm a person that tries to go with things that are officially licensed. When it's an Apple product, I want to get the Apple cord, not the regular cord. I just feel like it's safer that way and it's going to work better. I don't know, but that's just what I chose. So that's what I'll link below. And then you can check out other ones if you'd like. But now that you've protected the screen and potentially the dock, let's talk about the Switch as a whole. And this is where it gets fun, because the options for Switch cases are everywhere. There's so many different ones. I'm gonna talk about the four main types that you should consider and really think about your use case and which one will fit you the most. First, we have the PDP Slim case, which is good for someone who wants something ultra portable. They don't really care about carrying around physical games because maybe they're going digital or they just have one physical game or whatever it is. And they want something ultra portable and easy to move around. This case is perfect for that because it's slim and you don't have to worry too much about weight, size, or anything like that. This is the most portable case of them all and if that's what you want, this is a great case to go for. So the next one is Nintendo's premium travel case, which is what I have. And I have the Splatoon 2 version, but there's many other versions for Zelda, Mario Kart, Mario Odyssey. There's a bunch of different ones. I like this one the most because it actually comes with two game cases, which each have room for four games. And also it has little SD card carriers in each one if you want that, if you have an extra SD card. It also has a slot on the top where you can put in extra stuff inside of a mesh pocket. And the Switch fits perfectly over those game cases. And I think this one's great because it has a hard shell bottom, which is good for protection. It doesn't move around because it sticks to desks and stuff. And you don't have to worry about portability either because it's still pretty small. I can fit this into basically anything and it works really well. I carry around a bunch of games. My Switch never have to worry about it being damaged or anything. I think this is the middle of the road. If you're not like, it has to be super slim or I have to have the most options to carry things, this is the perfect case. It also has a lot of options of design to choose from and you can rep your Nintendo pride which I think is really cool out of all the cases this is really the only one that fleshes out that look and gives you designs next is the satisfy case I feel like saying it like that because the name is just spelled so funny this one is a little bit of an upgrade from the premium travel case because it's got a hard shell outside and they talk about being able to drop it from hundreds of feet up because it's meant to be indestructible basically obviously don't run it over with a car or something but if you drop it off a bridge like an awesome YouTuber RGT85 did. All right, three, two, one. Jesus Christ. 
you don't have to worry about your Switch getting messed up because, you know, it just, it's just in the hard case. It also has room for carrying around games and stuff. So if you're worried about protection, I would go with this case. You're never going to have to worry about anything happening to your Switch in this case. You can literally throw it out your window. You're walking down the stairs and there's a hundred stairs in front of you and it rolls down all of them. You're good. This case got you on that one. So that would be the case I would go for if you need protection. Last but not least, we have Nintendo's Traveler Deluxe case. I actually have this case as well, but this case isn't really meant for a normal portability of the Switch. This case is meant if you want to take the Switch anywhere with you. They actually made a perfect case where you can take the dock, all the cords, the Joy-Cons with the Switch, the Joy-Con grip, and even more accessories along the way. It actually comes with game cases and everything. So this is a perfect case if maybe you're going over and spending the night at a friend's house and you want to play docked on their TV, you're like me and traveling home from college for a few weeks and you want to be able to play your Switch in docked mode with some of your family and friends, this is the perfect way to do that. While this case does run $40, I think for all it offers and all it gives, that's a really good price for this case. But like I said, this isn't a normal use case one. I wouldn't recommend this to everyone. I'd only recommend this if your use case is something where you'll be taking the dock and the rest of the Switch stuff around with you pretty consistently. And next we've got our controller options. And this is really good because I just made a video actually on the best Nintendo Switch multiplayer games, which you can watch here and I'll link in the description below, because the Switch is amazing for multiplayer. The Switch does come with the two Joy-Cons, which can be played with as one controller, or for a lot of games, you can use each Joy-Con separately and two people can play with one Joy-Con. However, of course, you are going to want to upgrade to more, whether it's you wanna play more multiplayer games with more people, you want a nicer playing experience, because there are controllers beyond just the Joy-Cons to play with, and once you start playing with a regular controller, you never wanna go back to the Joy-Cons, unless, of course, it's portable on the Switch. But you have a few options here. And the first option, of course, is just more Joy-Cons which can actually be really cool because like I said, each single Joy-Con can sometimes be played by one person. So if you just get another additional set of Joy-Cons, for a lot of games you have four controllers now and can play with four people, which is really cool. Or you can have someone use a Joy-Con grip and you use uh, the two separately or whatever it is. Maybe you get a second Joy-Con grip and you have two con full controllers. So that is an option to consider. It's also in case there's backups, in case you mess up yours. Whatever it is, the Joy-Cons are a pretty good option. They, I wouldn't say they're the best, but all all of these controllers are all about the use case and budget and actually the Joy-Cons are the most expensive running $80. What is cool about them is there is a bunch of colors and designs. There's yellow, there's blue, there's red, like you can switch it up a lot and that is a cool aspect of the different Joy-Cons. But there are other better options and I think the best option actually to get is the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Now again, this is not a budget controller, it's $70, $10 less than the Joy-Cons, but this is the best way to play the Nintendo Switch. It has motion control. So you can do basically everything the Joy-Cons do on top of being wireless and it just feels great. It's super enjoyable to play the Nintendo Switch with this controller. I would say this is your best bet if you just want to have the best playing experience. Go with the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller for sure. But if you don't want to spend $70 and you want an additional controller, there is actually one more option. Before I say that though, I recommend never buying the cheap knockoff brands of controllers. They're never worth it. Like the old Nyko brand is just... Just don't do it, just don't buy those. And the third option is the Wired Controller Plus. Now these only run at $25. They're nowhere near as nice as the Pro Controller, but for almost a third of the price, you can't really blame them for being not as nice as the Pro Controller. Now I actually have one. I have the Legend of Zelda Wired Controller Plus, and it's a pretty nice controller. I tend to use it if I'm charging my wireless controller, or if I'm not really thinking about using that one, or if it's just plugged in already, I'll use it. It's not the biggest deal, but when you're on a budget, or if you want to get some of these other accessories and you really want to get them a controller as well or you want a controller for yourself, this is a really good option. It's enjoyable to play with, it makes it better than the Joy-Cons, and it's not wireless or anything, but the cord is 10 feet. So you can be across the room and be totally fine with this controller being wired. It's not short, unlike the SNES Classic Edition and NES Classic Edition. What were they thinking with those? So if you were to get, let's say, another set of Joy-Cons and the wired controller, or a Pro Controller and the wired controller, you all of a sudden have enough to play with four people no matter how you split it. So I definitely think that you can figure out which one works best for you and find the best use case because for some people another set of Joy-Cons is all they'll need. For some people they're going to be a hardcore gamer and they want that Pro Controller and for those people that you know are going to play this a ton, Pro Controller is worth it. 
Anyway, moving on to something that you might not think about, but it's really valuable, another AC adapter. The reason for this is you have the AC adapter that comes with the switch, and this is going to be plugged into the dock. Now let's say you're traveling and you've been using your switch all day and all of a sudden you're like, crap, I don't have my charger. And you have to go home, you have to unplug it from the dock, you have to take it out, you have to take it with you, and then when you get back home, you gotta re-plug it into the dock and put the switch in there. But what you could really do is just leave that AC adapter in there, never have to worry about it, and also buy an additional one so that when you travel around, you just have that with you everywhere you travel. In that case, you can always just come right home, sit your switch on the dock, it's ready to go. There's no changing out the cords, plugging it in, because that sucks, especially because this system is meant to be portable and taken around all the time. For me, I take my switch around all the time. I would die without an extra AC adapter. I can't even imagine having to always go back into that dock and open it up and take it out and plug it back in. No, no, I don't have time for that. So an extra AC adapter, they are a tad bit expensive, $25 for Nintendo's AC adapter, but I really do think it's worth it. it. You will very, very soon pay back that money in the time you save, not unplugging it from your dock. Of course, the point of the Nintendo Switch is to play games. So you're probably like, wow, I could buy my kids a case, five controllers, but then they won't have any games to play. That's right. So let's talk about games real quick. There's really two main games that you either need to get one of or both of, and those are Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, or Super Mario Odyssey. For every single Switch owner, I don't care who they are, what grade they're in, what gender they are, how old they are, they need one of these games, if not both. They're both 10 out of 10 games. They're both in the top 10 highest rated games of all time. You cannot go wrong with either of them. I would maybe look at them and see which one you think the person you're getting it for might enjoy, or if you're buying it for yourself, you might enjoy. But really, both of these games are essentials to the library. Maybe buy them one for Christmas. Maybe buy them one a month later because you want to be nice. You need both of them. But those aren't the only options, obviously. And in my multiplayer video, I named some other great games like Mario Kart 8, Splatoon 2. There's a bunch of other Nintendo games that are full price $60 experiences that are really great to get as well, which I would look at. But Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild come first. Although those are not the only types of games, the Nintendo eShop is flooded with incredible games right now that are all way cheaper than $60 and totally worth buying as well. I also do have a top five Nintendo games in the Nintendo Switch video, well, I will also link below, which I go a little bit more in depth about all of these games, like Super Mario Odyssey, Legend of Zelda, Splatoon, and more. So you can watch that and see which one you think really fits the bill for which one you want to get. As for the eShop, there are so many games under $20 that are brilliant. Stardew Valley, Rocket League, Sonic Mania, Axiom Verge, the list goes on and on. There are so many games and there's such a big variety and they're so different that the route I'd go if you were going to buy digital games like this is actually to get a Nintendo eShop gift card. These can go all the way up to $70. And again, they're linked below in the description. You can buy these and you, you yourself or whoever you're gifting them to can get whatever they want. And for me, I know, especially if there's multiple games to choose from, for a price, if you get a $50 one, you can buy two, you can probably buy three, maybe even four, because there's a couple $5 games on the eShop. You could buy multiple games. I'd rather be able to choose the games that I really love than have someone pick out the wrong game for me, because I've had people pick out the wrong gifts for me before. That's kind of unfortunate. So this is always a good route to go. And people might say, you know what, man, uh, that's not as fun. I don't want to just get a card for them. But then you could be like, all right, look, I watched this video and I would really recommend getting Rocket League and Stardew Valley. They seem really cool. And then they can go look and be like, yeah, these games were cool. Thanks for the recommendation, bro. Bro mom, bro dad, bro grandpa, whatever. You can be the one that enables them to get those amazing games on the eShop, which I definitely recommend. I will also be doing videos like the top 10 eShop games to get. So make sure you're watching the channel and if it comes out before Christmas or maybe just shortly after Christmas you can have them watch that video too and maybe look at some of those games to help them get an idea of what they want to buy but this is where the last thing comes in and that is SD cards now the problem with SD cards is that your Nintendo switch needs one if you're going to be buying multiple games it only comes with 32 gigabytes of storage which some of the games that come physical like NBA 2k18 doom and others you have to buy an SD card for to even play the entire experience so you're getting a game or two that's fine they don't need a SD card right now they're gonna need it in a little while three or four games your thing's full already so there's a few options for SD cards but I really think this option here from Amazon it's just a micro SD card you can get 200 gigabytes of space for around $77 which is an amazing deal it's literally 6.25 times the space 
on the Switch, which unless you're buying a ton of games all the time is plenty of space. And the thing is you can switch out these SD cards so you can get two 200 gigabyte ones or maybe you get one now and they fill it up eventually and then you get another one. That's totally an option. You can also go a little bit smaller to the 128 gigabyte if you don't think they'll be buying too many games and that one's only $42 so it is a bit more of a budget option and you can go all the way up to a 400 gigabyte one. Eventually there'll be two terabyte support but I don't see a reasonable two terabyte SD card coming out anytime soon but you can get a 400 gigabyte one for 250 which I think is way too much you could literally buy two 200 gigabyte ones for 150 so I don't know why you would do that but you can it is an option whatever you want to do I would recommend an SD card if maybe you just want to go small right away so they'll have enough and then maybe a year down the line you want them to buy more if they want to buy more games you never know that's what I'm saying all of this is based on your use case think about if you the person you're buying this for or even if it's yourself are you gonna be buying a lot of games are they gonna be big games or are they gonna be the little games that are 500 megabytes on the eShop those are all things to consider but I would definitely recommend an SD card and for the best value that 200 gigabyte one I know it's about a little bit more than a game but that will last you a long time. I know it's lasted me a long time and I play a lot of Switch games. All right guys, and I hope this list helps you figure out what to buy the person in your life you wanna give amazing Switch things. Maybe it's yourself, maybe it's your mom, maybe it's your son, maybe it's your friend, whatever. I hope this helped you out. Remember that all of these things that I talked about today are linked in the description below. And if there's anything I missed or any essentials, accessories, things like that, that you think that people should also buy, leave it down in the comment below. And I might make an additional video, like an accessories video or whatever it is. I'm going to be making a lot more games about the eShop and stuff. So make sure you smash that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video and you're new to the channel so you can join the community. Don't forget to give the like button some love. And I thank you guys so much for watching and hope this video helped you guys figure out what to buy this Christmas and every holiday to come. Anyway guys, let's continue to create the greatest gaming community in the world.